All right, sitting here in front of me, we have some old school toys from my childhood that I really enjoyed. The Tyco Typhoon, uh, RC Hovercraft. Now, the thing that's funny is nowadays we're playing with all sorts of crazy high tech stuff doing the RC airplanes. I want to Frankenstein a little bit of new school into this old school. Let's get into it. All right, well, let's just dive right into this project. Uh, you know, I love doing the weird off the wall stuff. Um, I like coming up with the weird Franken planes, and uh, today is no different. Uh, we're gonna take this classic toy, one I, I really did enjoy, and we're gonna take and, and modernize it using modern RC uh, parts. Um, so the Tyco Typhoon, this was a, a pretty cutting edge toy when it came out. And uh, you know, hovercraft, it could go on water and land, kind of go on water. Um, it has a, an airbag that inflates and uh, you know, it was, it was pretty neat. Well, I'm having so much fun right now with the RC stuff. Uh, I thought to myself, well, how could we make this better, bring this up to a current technologies and frankly go for overkill? I think I've got the way to do that. So we're gonna take our, uh, our little hovercraft here. We're gonna graft on a A10 uh, Warthog um, engine pack. This is from uh, Motion RC. This is off of their Freewing A10. Uh, we're gonna add that on to the rear, replacing these, uh, well, cute little DC um, fans. Boy, these, these don't do much, but they were fun back in the day. We're gonna add in, uh, let's, go for, let's go for a couple 64 millimeter um, fans uh, to power these up. Uh, we'll throw in a couple uh, oh, 40 amp ESCs. Uh, you know, we got those for, I think, 10 bucks on Amazon. The, uh, the uh, um, uh, EDFs were $19 each off of Amazon, and we're sitting about $19 for that, that pod there. And, you know, we need to still have the primary motor inside of this thing create the lift for the bag, not just thrust and propulsion. Uh, so we're gonna throw in a, a DC um, uh, controller here. This is, uh, this is actually for little robots. It's like 10 bucks. You get a set of two for that price. And uh, boy, it just works so well. Super easy to hook up to, to our existing DC motor. And uh, we're gonna modernize this as far as we can go. We're really gonna take this out to the runway. We're gonna see how fast we can get this going. So we're gonna take and throw in a, uh, a new Turnigy Nanotech 1.0 uh, milliamp, that's 1,000 milliamp, six cell battery to power those motors. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's it. I, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's the core of it. Why don't we tear this thing down and uh, bring it up to a current state? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and keep this short and sweet because uh, we all wanna see how this actually turns out. Alrighty folks, so here we have our Typhoon. Now, uh, we're gonna be using some time lapse here. We're trying to learn from everyone's feedback here on uh, speeding these videos up. And uh, basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a time lapse here real quick, jumping in and out of the teardown on this thing. Uh, pretty easy to do. Um, the bag is on the bottom, that comes off. We have some screws, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, we're gonna dive into some time lapse, and yeah, let's get this thing torn apart. So we've got this broken down to its core parts. Uh, we have our shell, a uh, little piece of floaty styrofoam. Uh, our bag, the mounting plate for the bag, we need to keep that and that. Uh, the fans, well, look at these cute little things. Pretty high tech for the day, but uh, <laughs> gone are the days of uh, cheap 
uh, Chinese brushed motors, I dare say. Um, and then this is kind of the core here. So this is the, uh, the brains of the unit. Um, it's got a, a pretty nice uh, setup here where it's got a, a quick connect that allows this entire chamber to be waterproof. Um, and uh, that just plugs into the, uh, the, the chassis. We have our main blower fan, and this is what actually fills up our bag. And uh, yeah, all of our electronics are in here. So this is now our next project. This is what we're gonna rip apart. And then we can start putting things back together. So let's clear this off. All right, so here we have our power uh, pack uh, for the, uh, the hovercraft. And this is just a uh, simple clamshell. There we go. Uh, rubber gasket around it for keeping it waterproof, which we don't care about uh, for what we're doing. Uh, this is going to be a land-based craft and uh, our old radio equipment. Um, so we got a push button, quick connects, we got our motor, which sounds like it's seen better days. Uh, the interesting thing about this is the motor directly solders to the circuit board, which is nice because that gives us the ability to allow that mount to work. So. Um, all we have to do to the circuit board is a quick desolder, we'll disconnect our power leads. Uh, this runs off of those old uh, 9.6V NICAD batteries. There we go. Sorry about the uh, keeping it in frame there, always tricky. Uh, and now we have two terminals on our motor, which we're going to try and heat up. There we go. And there's that old circuit board. Look at those old components, my gosh. Been a long time since I've seen parts like that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Look at that, look at that power switch. All right, so now all we need to do is wire in what we want to use now. All right, so working on these old electronics got me feeling a little nostalgic, so I got out my uh, old Radio Shack Rosin Corsair. solder. It's gonna become a rare commodity at some point. Um, so we're going to just take our pigtail and we're going to uh, connect it to our motor and polarity on this actually doesn't matter because with the bot controller that we're using, um, dead stick is, is neutral. Alright, not bad. Alright, next up, uh, all we need to do is use the uh, the mounting bracket that came with our little uh, A10 pod and we're going to drill two screws uh, or two holes right here for the screws to go through. The nice thing is, is uh, that's pretty straightforward. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Alrighty, so we've got our chassis here ready to uh, accept our power pack. Uh, I've gone ahead and installed uh, just some extension leads. Uh, these are available for two dollars each at uh, Hobby King. Just makes life super easy. Alrighty, so now it's time to install everything here. Um, pretty straightforward process. Uh, so I've taken a little piece of, uh, well in this case Old Crow, but uh, just uh, EPO foam, um, and built a little spacer. It just so happened to be the right thickness. Um, and that is uh, going to sit between the, uh, the chassis and the, uh, the nacelle. So let me show you. Um, we take and install our support and a little bit of foam. There we go. And that'll allow us to cinch everything down here. is uh, take our wiring and uh, run it on the outside of these posts that way I don't risk any interference with the fan and then once that is screwed down uh, I don't have to worry about that I can keep all my electronics up front because well you have a little weight back here let's throw some ballast in the front that's where we're gonna put our our speed controllers and batteries not bad though this thing's coming together 
All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, already done the tedious bit and uh, installed the bag again. Um, boy, lots of just tucking and tucking and tucking and folding. Um, bit of a pain in the butt. Um, all right, so really we're darn close here. Uh, so we've got uh, our, our 40 amp ESCs, um, which we're gonna, we're gonna throw into the mix. Uh, we've got our radio. Uh, gonna need that and uh, we've got a, a couple batteries uh, this should be pretty easy I think I'm just gonna set this up dirty right now um, believe it or not these fit beautifully um, in this uh, this gap right here and I think we'll get enough airflow um, but uh, I really like to to just test everything out before we do that so we're gonna wire things up dirty here just uh, you know quick and, and, and easy quick and dirty so <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, do this. So I'm just going to use some zip ties and some sticky pads and uh, we'll mount our batteries in and uh, yeah, here we go. Alrighty, folks, <laughs> for better or worse, here we go. <laughs> uh, we have a little cabling mess up here, but uh, that's because I didn't know how hot our, uh, our um, ESCs would get and uh, decided not to bury them inside the, uh, the hovercraft body. Uh, we'll clean up the wiring later should this prove itself because I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun. Um, I had some problems with my six cell, so we're using a four cell for this test. Uh, one of the one of the uh, EDFs just would not play nice with it, and uh, so we dropped it down to a four, and it's like, oh, we'll play with that. So, uh, kind of an interesting mis mismatch between the either the e EDFs or the ESCs. We'll tease that out, but we got enough power already, and uh, <laughs> let's let's do the fun part. Let's do the thrust check. So. I've got the uh, motor set up right now for the blower uh, on my right knob. Uh, I'm using a DX8, uh, just in case anyone's wondering, Spectrum. And uh, I've got differential thrust set up on the EDFs. I, I've heard the argument before. Oh, it takes so long to spool up, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I disagree now, uh, after kind of playing with this just a little bit here. So let's, let's give this a whirl, let's see what it'll do. Uh, so first things first, uh, I've got to eventually get back in there. There's a loose uh, uh, bearing on the, the fan, but eh, it'll make noise maybe. We'll see. All right. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Throttle cut was on only for one channel. Here we go. That is insane. Uh, directional control is really good on this. <laughs> I think this thing is going to just tear, tear down the runway. Go ahead and turn off our, uh, our uh, 1980s lawnmower. Uh, man, this is going to be just an absolute riot. Uh, totally a crazy contraption, obviously, right? But uh, we're able to use these airplane parts, these EDFs, uh, really cost effectively, have some fun, do some tinkering. I'm really curious how fast this is going to go. We're going to take our, uh, our radar gun out and uh, we'll see if we can't clock this. Uh, the other thing that blows my mind is just how responsive those EDFs are. Um, let's give that a whirl again for, for the uh, left-right control. <laughs> If I'm not careful, this is going to go careening off the table. And I don't want to break it before we, we break it, right? So uh, there we go. Uh, completely just one of those weird random things. Um, just something I've wanted to do for a long time. Strapping these, uh, 
these A10 EDF pods onto various different things, I think is going to become kind of a fun little uh, pastime of mine. <laughs> so see, you'll see more videos of that flavor uh, as we go. But uh, yeah, fun stuff. Um, you know, when we have easy accessibility and really cost-effective accessibility to things, we get a tinker. Tinkering is always fun, so, you know, who knows, maybe we'll, uh, we'll resurrect the old Typhoon in its full glory, build a larger scale foam board model, that's also rattling around in the head right now. So, there we have it. Uh, well, they've already got a Typhoon and a Typhoon 2, so do we call this the Typhoon 3? <laughs> I think we do, the Typhoon 3, uh, and, uh, you know, powered by Motion RC's uh, free wing. Uh, A10. Uh, that's just, you know, how does that get any better than that? So uh, we'll take this out. You'll see the <laughs> maiden <laughs> of this glorious contraption soon. And until then, keep flying. Hmm.